Thanks for joining us here on the Roadrunner Review, the 30-minute magazine show that features Metro State sports and their highlights from the past month. I'm joined today by Davey Burke, Miles Potter, and yours truly, Kevin Hall. Today on the show, we're going to follow our softball team through the RMAC postseason. They're looking for some hardware for the first time in four years. We're also going to look back at a memorable 2013-14 season for all of our sports teams. But first, let's send it over to Davey Burke for some Roadrunner news. Thanks, guys. And I can't believe the 2013-2014 season is already over. But before we end the season, we still have some more news to bring you, as Joan McDermott was just named the Under Armour Athletic Director of the Year this past month. McDermott earned the award in the Division II ranks and it was her second time capturing the honor after winning it in the 2007-2008 season. McDermott just finished her 16th season with the Roadrunners and spearheaded the brand new $16 million athletic complex that will be the new home for tennis, baseball, softball and both soccer teams. And a big congratulations to Joe McDermott as she's an inspiration to everyone that works with her here in the athletic department at Metro State. And make sure you tune in next month as we have an inside look into the career that is Joan McDermott. You do not want to miss that. And now we have some news from track and field to bring to you. Senior distance runner Kirk Harvey was recently named the Rocky Mountain Athletic Conference Outdoor Track Academic Athlete of the Year. It is the second straight year that the Lafayette native has taken home the award. Harvey majors in biology with a minor in chemistry and sports an impressive 3.84 GPA. Nice going, Kirk. And sticking to the track, sophomore middle distance runner Brianna Hemming was named the RMAC Summit Award winner after carrying the highest grade point average at the RMAC Championships. The Kiowa, Colorado native earned a 4.0 GPA in human development and elementary education. Great job, Brianna. And guys, I think that's one reason why the student athletes here at Metro State are pound for pound the best in the RMAC and maybe the country. Yeah, they really place a lot of emphasis on the student part of the student athletes here at Metro. And it goes back to Joan McDermott as the athletic director. I mean, she really expects these student athletes to do well on the court and off the court. Yeah, it's great to see that they work so hard trying to perfect their sport, and they also do a great job with their studies as well. And I know Kevin wishes he had a GPA like that. It's, it's getting up there. It's getting up there. Well, now look at the surprise of the season. It was our softball team, led by head coach Annie Van Wetzinga in her first year at Metro State. The team started out strong, then lost three of their last four, but still made it to the RMAC tournament. Ended up going through the loser's bracket after losing their second game of the tournament, take on UC Color Springs, and then Fort Lewis. Down two to nothing in the second, Metro would rally. Chelsea Brew doubles to bring Mary Towner all the way home. In the third, Katie DeGuaro singles through the left side to bring in Kaylin Harmon and Kelsey Tillery to take a 5-2 lead. The offense didn't stop there. Brew again in the fourth, bloops one to center field. Jordan Hitchings can't make the grab and Tilly crosses the plate for the 7-2 lead. On to the sixth, and it's Brew once again who powers the pitch over the left field wall for the 9-2 lead. Roadrunners hang on for the 9-7 win to move on to that championship round. Metro needed to beat Fort Lewis twice to take home the Armac crown. Second inning, Kalissa Bakovich singles to the right center wall, driving in two runs, including Brew, who slides around the catcher. Runners put up six runs in the second inning. It's 9-2 Metro State. When Towner goes yard for a three-run blast, she would finish the game with four RBIs. And how about one more for good measure? Harmon takes Katie Watkins deep for the solo shot. The Roadrunners win 13-2 to force championship game number two. The winner of this game takes the RMAC tournament title. First inning, Metro gets on the board first thanks to Towner who brings in Brittany Thomas. Towner is having an amazing tournament. Aubrey Maul on the mound for Metro. The ball is crushed to the left field wall, but Thomas is there on the great grab to keep the Skyhawks off the scoreboard. Fort Lou threatening in the fifth. Runners on second and third, two outs. Chelsea Rodriguez sends the pitch to the gap, but there's Bakovich. Get on your horse. Robs Rodriguez and the Skyhawks have two runs on the diving catch. That's an incredible play by the freshman. The game is tied one to one heading into extra innings. Bottom of the eighth, Towner at the plate, and her already impressive tournament gets even better. Walk off to end the game. She enjoys the trot around the bases and the swarm at home plate, and they win the game two to one and the RMAC tournament title for the first time since 2009. An incredible finish that earns the squad an automatic invitation to the NCAA tournament. 
The magical postseason journey continued in Canyon, Texas, where Coach Van Wetzinger and her team took on Texas Women's University in a double elimination tournament. Great start for Metro State. Danny Sindel goes over the tall left field wall to put her team up 1-0 in the first inning. The Pioneers answered back in the second. Katie Stevens sends a towering pop-up into the infield. The ball drops in and two runs come across to give the Pioneers the 3-1 advantage. We head into the fifth where Metro's bats finally came alive as Tillery, Harmon, and Maul all go yard to spur a seven-run inning. Tillery added one more round tripper to help her squad to the 9-4 win to continue in the winner's bracket. Next for the Roadrunners was a date with the number one team in the nation in West Texas A&M, and they struck first. Keisha Dawkinson with the opposite field home run to put her team up 2 to nothing in the second. The Buffs bat around and it's Dawkinson again in the same inning and she drives in two more on this single to left field. The Lady Buffs put up six runs in the second inning. It's a big hole for the red and blue, but they would fight back. Maul at the plate, she rockets the liner to third base. It's off the glove and the two runs come in to score. DeGuaro connects on a solo blast in the fourth to get her team within three but the Buffs score five runs in the fourth and fifth innings to run rule our runners to take the 13-5 victory. Metro would end up losing their second game in the loser's bracket 11-3 to Midwestern State to end their season, but still was a great one. No one really expected much out of them at the start. Yeah, absolutely. First year coach Annie Van Wetzinger coming in and uh, really turns this team around from last year. Yeah, Metro State, I mean, Towner, Mall, they all play great and it's going to be exciting to see what they do in the future. Yeah, it's hard to watch Sandell, Tillery, and Maul all go and leave, but left some great ones behind to really get this program over the hump. Yeah, the future's bright. Definitely. Definitely. All right, well, still to come on the show. The 2013-2014 season brought us some incredible performances, spectacular wins, and memorable moments that need to be relived. We'll recap all the exciting highlights from this previous 10 months, so come on back to see if your top moment makes the list. We know you want family-friendly sporting events. Sporting events where you can be comfortable. And entertained in a positive environment. Watching great individuals and teams compete. With commitment, effort, and good sportsmanship. That's what the Division II Game Environment Initiative is about. Be a part of the excitement and find out why. These student-athletes say with pride, I chose. I chose. I chose Division II. The Roadrunner Review is brought to you by its proud sponsors, Panorama Orthopedics and Spine Center. From sports injuries to spine injuries to total joints for arthritis, they are in your neighborhood caring for your injuries. Located at three convenient locations, Golden, Littleton, and Thornton. Welcome back. Time to kick off our year in review portion for our men's basketball team. We're one shot away from returning back to that national championship game. Coach Clark and his squad are ready to go this season, even after losing All-American Jonathan Morse. The 2013-2014 Roadrunners didn't miss a beat after losing Morse and Demetrius Miller. The Red and Blues showcased their talent to the nation, defeating three Division I opponents in the preseason NIT tournament. Head coach Derek Clark carried that momentum into conference play, where his troops went undefeated at 22-0, becoming just the third RMAC team to ever go unbeaten. Metro State won the RMAC regular season title, the RMAC tournament title, and the South Central region title while making a repeat appearance in the Final Four. The team went 32-2 overall on the season. Such a fun season to watch and so many great plays. Can you even pick just one? I mean, Davey, we'll start with you. Well, mine is something that we saw all throughout the year, but the team going perfect in the RMAC, as we say, that's probably the toughest conference in all Division II. And just the fact that Metro went perfect, I mean, you had Nicholas K, in my opinion, the best backcourt in the country with Mitch McCarron and Brandon Jefferson lighting up. And just a tremendous job that Coach Clark did getting the talent from everybody he can. And we saw them almost losing some close games, but they were able to prevail. And it was just fun to watch. Now, my top moment is probably the Coach Clark's 100th win of his career. I mean, this was amazing to see. And, you know, such a down-to-earth guy. He didn't want to really talk about it after the win. He got a basketball 
And that's about all he wanted. To, that's all he really wanted to know. Well, he's very team oriented, and he let he didn't let anyone touch that basketball. He let his coaches and Brandon Jefferson because they were there for all 100 of those wins. Now, my favorite moment, it's, of course, Brandon Jefferson. Dude was on fire the entire season, scored career-high points multiple times, most recently against UC Colorado Springs at 37 points. But he was named RMAC Preseason Player of the Year, ended up being named RMAC Player of the Year. He was named RMAC Player of the Week multiple times, Player of the Month multiple times, and then capped it all off National Player of the Year. Haven't had that since Mark Worthington back in 2005, so it's great to see that roadrunner tra tradition being carried in the national spotlight and he was lighting it up too. 45% from three point range and he set the single season scoring record for points and for free throws. Yeah, absolutely, a great addition. I mean, really kind of a surprise I would say. I mean, I know he came into his own that Fort Lewis game a couple years ago. We made that game winner, but really came up to his own this year and showed what he could do, especially on a national stage. Yeah, and it's not just his play, it's also his intangibles. He's like a court general out there, almost another coach. He does a great job leading his guys, getting the play to go. And I don't think anyone else should be able to wear number three in the history of Metro basketball anymore. He was just phenomenal. And then also his defense, that speaks for itself. Like yeah. he, We've talked with him, and he said he would much rather have a steal and a layup than a three-point shot. And, I mean, against Reed, just he had seven steals. He averaged about like three a game. Yeah, and he's clutch too. Big shot BJ. He hits the shots. He gets the ball when he needs to. He's incredible. Big shot BJ. And I am looking forward to seeing what he can do in the next level. I mean, I know we had him last month on our show, and nothing but a nice guy, down to earth guy. Well, we are spoiled here, here at Metro State, covering such a great men's basketball team and so many great moments to pick from. I mean, you had going up against Derek White, Brandon Jefferson, yeah. and that three. Three point play from Jefferson, like everything's Jefferson. Nick K had a great tournament as well. Well, like I said, we are spoiled here at Metro State covering a nationally ranked program like this men's basketball team. Before we head to break, we're going to recap our women's basketball team. Head coach Tanya Javi entered her fourth season with the runners and had to adjust to life without four year players Emily Wood and Kristen and Brandy Valencia. With the turning seniors in Amy Nelson, Kaya DeGarmo, Cassie Lambrecht, and Ty Jensen. Metro State completed the season with a 12-10 RMAC record, earning a spot in the conference tournament for the ninth straight year. Another strong season for the women's team. We got to take a break, but when we come back, we'll revisit the 2013 volleyball season up next on the Road Review, which includes an incredible milestone from one of the all-time great head coaches. Are you a college student that needs a place to live? Are you still living with your parents and want your own space? The Regency Student Housing is perfect for you. The community offers many amenities such as a fitness center, two basketball courts, big screen amphitheater, all you can eat dining hall, bowling alley, arcade, free parking, and a shuttle to and from the Auraria campus. For more information, please call 303-477-1950 or visit our website at regencystudenthousing.com. Some students come to Metropolitan State University of Denver to find their future. Others look to sharpen their current skills. In the case of David Thibodeau, it was both. Our faculty helped fuel his entrepreneurial spirit while encouraging him to pursue his personal passions. These two talents came together in Ska Brewing Company, which he co-founded in 1998 in Durango and is considered one of the top up-and-coming Colorado companies. The Roadrunner Review would like to thank its sponsors. Jason's Deli. Real food is fresh, higher quality, more flavorful, less processed, and naturally better tasting. Get real food at any Jason's Deli location. And the Boulder Broker Inn, a proud partner and preferred hotel for Metro State Athletics. Thanks for coming back. We're still taking a trip down memory lane, looking back at the best of the best from the 2013-2014 season. Our volleyball team lost key contributors in Amy Wong and Vanessa Gemignani, but returned star players like Alyssa Heath, Lauren Quijano, and Alex Green. Head coach Debbie Hendricks entered her 14th season with the red and blue and led the team to 20 wins and a return appearance to the RMAC tournament. Led by third-team All-American Alyssa Heath, the squad finished the season on a five-game winning streak and then proceeded to shock the conference by winning their sixth RMAC tournament title and their first since 2009. The championship earned Metro the automatic bid to the NCAA tournament for the 14th straight season. 
while I'm going to keep going on Coach Hendricks, she entered her 14th season, which is the longest tenured coach here at Metro State, and she racked up the accomplishments this season. Her 300th Metro win on August 17th against CSU Pueblo, and then her 500th career win November 2nd against UCCS. So there's just so many wins that she's accomplished. I mean, she's the 15th active Division II head coach with 500 career wins and the 29th in Division II history. And let's just, she's had success her entire coaching career. She had a national championship when she was down at West Texas A&M, and then she's led her team here at Metro to 14th consecutive NCAA tournament. Getting 500 wins on anything is just impressive in itself. I mean, no matter what sport you're in, getting that accomplishment, it's huge. Yeah, she's bar none, probably the best volleyball coach in Metro State history. And she's just done a great job even this year we saw with all the new faces. She did a good job putting them all together. And I mean, we saw it end up in an RMAC championship. And she's just an excellent coach, too, on and off the court. Yeah, absolutely. And just putting her wins into perspective, I've been here four years. She has 300 or more than 300 wins at Metro State. I've been here for 87 of them. So that just tells you how long she's been here working at her craft getting better each year. Players come, players go, but still she puts out a solid product year in and year out. Yeah, but one of those key players that they are losing is Alyssa Heath, three or third team All-American. I mean, this she has a monster of a spike. I mean, I know all of us have been saying, sitting up in the stands, but like, man, I would not want to be right there when she gets, throws down that spike. Yeah, it's almost like an earthquake <laughs> when he goes into the ground. She's just so solid. She played at Wichita State, so you know she's got that D1 experience. And it's going to hurt losing her, but I mean, Metro State, they got some good players, good young players, and we'll see where they go. Well, guys, my top moment is one that we saw at the end of the year, something we kind of seem like would be unlikely, but them just winning the RMAC championship, getting hot at the right time, going down to Western New Mexico, beating them in their house, coming back here, beating CC in Golden, and then beating Adams as well. And it was something that we seen, we thought was unlikely, a lot of new faces at the beginning of the year, but... They were just able to pull it together and win the championship. You know what? When it's typical playoffs, I mean, you got to get hot at the right time, and they got hot at the right time. They went three on a row, went down to Canyon, Texas once again, lost in the NCAA's. But you know what? That's all right. They did bring home an RMAC crown. Well, I'm excited for this next season coming up for our volleyball team. You have Lauren Quijano and Brandy Tor, like I said. But I still don't think we've seen the best out of Kylie Hahn. She's going to be fun to watch as she improves her game. Now, before we go to break, let's take a look back at our women's golf team who played in their inaugural season. Head coach Ben Porty built this program from the ground up and quickly made huge strides to be an instant contender in the RMAC. Porty was named co-coach of the year in the conference after leading his squad to a sixth place finish at the RMAC championships. Two of his players finished in the top 20 at the championships. Not a bad start for the shiny new program. Time for a break, but still ahead on the show. Our women's soccer team had a plethora of great moments in 2013. Come on back to see which ones made our list as we relive their magical run to the Sweet 16. Don't go anywhere, we're coming right back here on the Roadrunner Review. Metro State Roadrunners, one of the most successful Division II programs in the nation. Six national championships. 65 conference championships in the RMAC. 248 All-Americans. The season is almost here and admission is free for all students. Great prizes will be handed out at select games, so make sure you're in the crowd. You can also follow the Roadrunners through Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, and GoMetroState.com. Get in the game and get rowdy. I want to welcome you back into the Roadrunner Review and look back at our women's soccer season, who didn't even lose a game till the end of October. They started the season 9-0-3 and, and returned to the RMAC tournament for the 11th consecutive year and for the 13th straight season it was back to the NCAA tournament where they returned to the Sweet 16 after upsetting Colorado Mines on their home pitch. Well one of the big storylines this past offseason was head coach Adrian Almarez. She got married so congratulations to her, changed her name to Coach Peets. And another great storyline was the play of Brandi Farley who had her team excelling throughout the entire season. 
Yeah, that's one of my favorite moments of the season is Brandy Farley really coming out of her show. Nine goals, three assists, all named to all region, second team, all region teams. Yeah, and she deserved it. Look yeah. Play. You said nine goals. Yeah, she had an incredible year for Metro State. Yeah, she had that hat trick earlier in the season, and then her and Rolf had a great chemistry together, so they were playing off each other. Again, one goal after another, and they were always like bear hugging each other, so that was fun to watch them on the field. Yeah, especially going into this next season with her, uh, Price, and Rolf on the same line, it's going to be a three-headed monster that's, that's out there. That's going to be a stellar line. It's going to be fun to watch that line just score goals left and right. And guys, my favorite moment was as we were talking about Farley. Mine is Rolf, just her play on the field this year. She was fun to watch. And she's smart. She racked up almost every single academic award we could think of. <laughs> I know something we can't do. And she was just great. She was also first team all RMAC this year. And I mean, her performance next year is going to be fun to watch going into her senior year. She was clutch. She did great with assists, setting the school record with five straight assists in the game. She was just phenomenal. Not to mention, Rolf was named third team All American. Yep. After that Midwestern State game, they played up in Golden again against Colorado Mines, who was the number two team in the nation. Mines hadn't lost at home all year, never given up two goals all year. Metro State ends up going in winning 3-1. to one. I mean, it started out great. Maggie Rojas got the ball in off the corner kick, ricocheted in. Pollock, nice little cleanup goal in front of the net. And then that third goal, Farley coming in across. He crosses the ball, headed in by a Mines' own player. So there's that third goal. And then, of course, Metro led in one goal at the end, but still Metro won 3-1. to one. And Got a little bit of revenge. Yeah, Kevin, like you were saying, a little bit of revenge. The Mines did end Metro season in 2012 right behind us at the Auraria Fields. Yeah, and we know after that victory, it was an emotional high for them. We saw Coach, she was excited, Abby Rolf. It was a victory that they really wanted. It was a victory that they needed, and they were just so happy and so thrilled to get that victory. Well, still got some great players coming back, like we were talking about Carissa Price, Abby Rolf, still Brandy Farley, Alexi Tess, Mar. Tess Hangislock coming back this year, too. Yeah, she's come back off injury. So Marie Ipok, who yep. Hagenlock replaced, and then got injured. So have them both on the field. So that's going to be fun to watch. And before we go to break, we're going to take a look back at our men's soccer season. Head coach Ken Parsons entered his 10th season with the Red and Blue and led the team to 10 wins for the 11th consecutive season, which is the longest active streak in the conference. Senior stars Brendan Hughes, Andy Lopez, and defensive player of the year Andrew Mejia all led the way, carrying the team to the RMAC tournament. The team also sported the freshman of the year in defensive stud Tyler Trujillo. We had the top five plays from this past season, and you don't want to miss which play earned the title of top play from the 2013-2014 season. We're coming right back. I love learning. I believe in service. I am full of passion. I embody sportsmanship. I trust in my resourcefulness. I like balance. That's why I chose. I chose. I chose. I chose. I chose. I chose Division Two. Final hurdle here on the road in review, but before we get to top plays, we got some cross country, track and field, and baseball to get you through. We'll start with some cross country as Nick Moss took over the program after the departure of John Subsick. The team saw many successes in the fall, including the women, who at one point was ranked number nine in the top 25 poll, which was the highest in program history. Both the men and women's team won the Colorado College Invitational in late September, and both had strong showings in the NCAA championships, where the women finished eighth and the men finished 13th. Brianna Hemming, Janelle Lynx, Nick Cadlick, and Kirk Harvey all earned All-American honors. Now to some track and field, as Kurt Harvey and Brianna Hemming once again shine for Metro State. Hemming earned All-American status after finishing sixth in the mile and leading the distant medley relay to a fifth place finish. It was the first women's indoor NCAA All-Americans in school history. Harvey also excelled in his senior season by earning All-American honors after finishing seventh in the 3,000 meter at the NCAA championship. And we finish our journey with our baseball team that saw many great performances throughout the 2014 season. Daryl Baca rebounded off his sophomore slump campaign to hit 366, blasting 10 home runs, scoring 33 runs, and driving in 29. He was named second team all Armac and second team all South Central Region in his junior year. Kevin Hand also amazed from the mound as a senior Southpaw earned second team all conference after sporting an impressive 2.12 ERA, striking out 31 batters in 51 innings. All right, guys, I'm not sure how we managed to do it, but we whittled all the great plays from this past season into five. But here we go. 
Here are the top five plays from the 2013-2014 season. We'll start with the men's basketball in play number five, and it comes from the South Central Regional Championship game. Metro in transition. Jamal McClurkin sends the defender to the hospital after breaking his ankles on his way to the layup. The crowd exploded after this play. McClurkin making that defender look silly. The Roadrunners would use McClurkin's great play to win the regional championship for the third straight year. Now for some women's hoops in play number four. Metro State found themselves in a dogfight in early February with Black Hill State, the third best team in the conference. The Roadrunners needed a big win to move up in those RMAC standings. The Yellow Jackets were up by three with under two minutes to go. Ty Jensen passes, gets to deflect it to the backcourt. Janae Payne tracks it down with just seconds left on the shot clock. She finds Cassie Lambrick, who fires it up from Kansas, and it connects to tie the game at 57s. That is a big time shot from the senior, who had to come out earlier in the game after colliding with a defender. Metro carried that momentum to a 63-58 upset win over Black Hill State. We go back to the men's basketball team and we stay in the playoffs as the Roadrunners battled the Skyhawks in the semifinals of the RMAC tournament. It's a six-point game in the second half with Mitch McCarron finds Nicholas K, who attacks the rim and flushes it down over Alex Herrera, the conference's defensive player of the year. K showing no fear, posterizing one of the nation's top shot blockers and then showing emotion after our number three play. The Thunderers jam ignite the red and blue to take the victory on their way to the RMAC tournament championship. Play number two comes from the pitch as our women's soccer team took on Midwestern State in the first round of the NCAA tournament. We are into overtime when Nicole Pollock sends the header to Abby Rolf, who despite the blurriness of the camera, flicks the shot over the keep for the goal. Runners win, right? Wrong. The officials call off sides and the goal is taken away. Rolf can't even believe it and the game goes on. Have no fear, All-American Abby Rolf is still here and she deflects the pass from Nicole Pollock into the back of the net to move on to the next round of the big dance. And we all know what happened next as our Roadrunners defeated the number two team in the nation, Colorado Mines, to advance to Sweet 16. And our top play from the 2013-2014 season comes from our surprising softball team, who streaked through the RMAC tournament into the championship game number two. The game goes into extra innings, tied at one apiece. Mary Townsend at the plate, two outs on the board, 3-2 count on Kylie Reka. The pitch gets sent in, and Tower delivers the walk-off blast to win the game 2-1 and the RMAC championship. The junior was incredible during her team's tournament march and comes through in the biggest moment of the weekend. The championship is Metro's first since 2009, and they got their tickets punched to the NCAA tournament in Canyon, Texas. Those were your top plays from this past year, and as always, they're brought to you by the Regency. Well guys, so many great memories from this past year and so many moments that will just live on in Roadrunner lore. And I want to thank all the coaches, the administrators, the players, and of course the fans for tuning in every month. And make sure you check out next month's show as we bring you a special hour-long edition of the Roadrunner Review, celebrating five great years of this great show, produced by our fearless leader, Eric Lansing. We don't want to miss that. But for Davey Burke, Miles Potter, Eric Lansing, the entire Roadrunner Review crew, I'm Kevin Hall. We'll see you next time.